guys, Gaston from Connecting Tennis here. Welcome to another video. We're getting close to the end of 2019. 2020 is arriving and we have so, so many things. I've been working on a couple of things and I'm gonna tell you a little spoiler that in February, I'm gonna be hosting the forehand week. I love you guys to participate, to get into that. I'm gonna release a link uh, a little ahead, maybe in January, where you guys can uh, register to be part of the forehand week where we're gonna be going very, very deep into everything that we have to know on the forehand, absolutely everything, so much content, and I really like for you guys to be there uh, taking advantage of all that content, all right? So for today, we're gonna talk also about forehand, and I'm gonna talk about the forehand down the line, and a little, I'm gonna give you some uh, drills on how you can improve it. We're gonna talk a little about the, the movement of the rack and the path, and the first thing that we're gonna go is, remember when we talk about the short angle forehand video that I was on a clay court that we work, okay, uh, from here. And we, we talk a lot of getting um, from outside of the ball to be able to hit the short angles on their side. And maybe when your opponent is in the net, you can hit a good passing, or even if you're riding from the baseline, just opening the court with a really good angle. So now, besides hitting uh, balls down the line today, we're gonna do also one uh, simple drill where you open first with the ball and then you go down the line and you close it, all right? So let's get into the video. I hope you really enjoy it. So let's get into it. And the first thing again, remember that if you wanna play a forehand down the line, you will have two different, uh, of course you, you might have more, but we're gonna get only into the basics too, okay? Which would be an open stand, uh, open stand with your legs or close stand. You see players like Del Potro who are very much uh, powerful and they always look for more power. You see that when he's playing behind the line, he tends to hit more with an open stand um, footwork. And when he's getting in the court, I mean, Federer, most of the players, when you get into a court, you try to be a little more aggressive. So that's very important for you to understand, okay? When are you gonna hit and when in the rally you're gonna get and hit with an open stand and when you're gonna have the chance to get in and hit with a closed stand, taking um, more aggressive, okay, um, initiative on the ball. So once we have those two and you understand the difference, and I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna hit both so you, so you can see. Once you understand that, you have to understand what? If you are hitting a ball, and I always tell this to my players, to please be really smart on how you play this ball. When you make decisions, okay? And I, I had a coach that used to say, 90% uh, of the mistakes you make are because of the bad decisions you take. So. If you are hitting and you are having a rally, cross court or down the middle, you're exchanging forehands and you go down the line, maybe from outside and you hit a ball that doesn't go straight towards the line and gets to the middle, what is gonna happen? If your opponent is in the middle and it's recovering well, he will just step up and take the ball to the other side. So you will be already um, giving away the control of the point or maybe that fight that you're having to see who opened the spaces. So be really smart when you choose to hit a, a down the line shot, a down the line shot, and also try to uh, really hit it down the line. There is a lot of mistakes, and I, I've seen players. Uh, you can see it also on the tour when a player decides to go down the line, and sometimes he doesn't hit the best shot, and the ball gets to the middle. He turns too much. He gets it too much in front. The ball finishes going down the middle. So when I like to play down the line, I like to um, separate this into two balls. If they're taking me out of the court, my opponent is still on the middle and he has a chance, and I can see that he has a chance to step up and take the ball to their side. Djokovic, uh, he's probably the, ones, the one that makes this ball uh, more uh, efficient where he Instead of just hitting a linear ball, he plays a really heavy ball down the line.
to make his opponent what? If the opponent is not gonna get in and take the ball on the rise, which is very, very tough because he plays a really good ball, the opponent will have to run back to then hit the ball, but he's not gonna be uh, giving away because he will play the ball a little higher to have the chance and the time to recover. And maybe his opponent doesn't get to the ball well, so then he can take the control. So I like to play that ball and I always uh, told my players to play the ball very, very smart. Okay, if you're not in the best position, if you're not confident, if you're not, uh, if you don't feel that you can really create a damage down the line, just play the, the ball smart, play it with more spin, okay, make a heavy ball down the line, okay, down the line, so you can have time to recover it. Then, that ball, you would hit it more with an open stance. Now, if you really have the time and you see that you have your opponent and you could create a good angle with the, with the forehand cross court and then your opponent plays a little short and you have the time either to take the ball on the rise and be more aggressive or to step up here with the close stand and just follow the ball lower and, and a little uh, faster down the line. So I'm gonna show you the two different balls that you can play with this that I told you, okay? A more heavy and a spin ball and a ball that you're taking on the rise or a ball that you're just taking early and going fast so you cut the time, okay? Maybe David Ferrer, if you probably guys know, yeah, you, you sure know David Ferrer. Uh, he was one of the players, uh, Gofan, another player that he takes, okay, and he cuts the time. Federer, of course, very well on the forehand because he he opens you cross court and then once you recover, and he's already here inside of the court taking the ball down the line and really creating a damage, all right? So another thing that I also like, and you have to pay attention, when we talk about the cross court, we talk about getting from the outside of the ball, okay, if the ball is a watch, okay, we always talk about the, the analogy, you get on the number three because you wanna, you want to get here and you want to wrap the ball around to be able to create the angle. Here, on the down the line, you will have to get more from behind the ball. And this is a mistake that I see a lot when players get here, play the ball cross court, they open the opponent really well, and then the other ball they want to play down the line and again getting from the outside. Again, the ball is gonna get to the middle. So be really aware on the difference before, be, between getting the ball from the outside to create a good angle or getting the ball, a clear ball, a net ball, okay, how we call it here, uh, from behind to get it more and have better impact and a better pop on the ball, all right, to go down the line. So let's see a couple of shots and then we're gonna keep talking on this. You guys saw there the different balls that I was playing a little more from outside of the court, playing more uh, with a spin, a little, a little more a heavy ball, what we can say, a ball that is gonna bounce and probably get really fast and get a little of height so it's tougher for your opponent to defend. And the ball where I step in and I take it more, uh, very much in front and a little more flat, just trying to make the ball keep it low, okay, and very quick, very fast that if your opponent gets there, it's gonna be very tough to defend and then gives you a really good chance. You could see I was probably one or two steps inside of the court. After that ball, of course, you're gonna go with the net. If you hit the forehand like that and you, you can take it, okay, and get the ball to be really, uh, be effective in terms of going low, going fast and opening to the side, of course, you have to go to a net because you will be able then to make the setup if it comes back or close on the first volley. Check the, the cord that I'm putting here, okay? Because it's very important, again, going back to the understanding. If you are in the middle of the cord, as you can see here, the angles you have are different. The more in the middle you are here, the more you can play to the outside, but once you start to get to the sideline, is the more you will have to play or either a really good down the line or get a little to the middle, middle maybe one step, okay? Maybe one step here but keeping always the ball here because after this it becomes 
more more or less uh, a down the line ball uh, down the middle ball all right so keep that in mind it's very important now let's take a look at the balls where i can open the court with the cross court and then yes i take the chance on the down the line so there you could see and you actually have an amazing drill there that if you have a coach your partner uh, you can do it you can do it either feet in the ball and you hit one cross court one on the line one cross corner or it's a great one if you have a partner that you play you can keep the rally cross court okay you can also set up cones on the cross court and once somebody gets between the cones and the line they have the right to go down the line and there you can just leave it or open the point or play it you can see that you have different variations here so we show you i show you the more spinny okay heavy down the line more like Djokovic style does then we had the more aggressive going forward okay close time just taking the ball a little earlier and taking the time and then the setup where you take your opponent and you could see that the, the cross court i play it's not a very fat ball what you really need here is just playing and it's very smart okay getting a good angle to take your opponent out because the more that you can open the court the easier you would have to play the ball down the line okay because your opponent will be running all the way will be defending already so you don't have to go 200 miles per hour down the line taking a big risk all right so that's what i wanted to show you today remember please if you didn't subscribe to the channel subscribe turn on the notifications guys if you like the content of course you want to uh, get the, the videos as soon as they're live. Again, thank you. I, I, I always thank you uh, for, for watching the videos, for taking the time. Remember that everything that I put here, all the content that I bring might be a little more to work because if you understand the process of building a player, that's what I wanna give you. For me, there is no, it doesn't exist. The, the, the miracle of take this video, take a 10 minutes lesson and then you're gonna serve 200 miles per hour for me that's that's totally fake i just want to give you resources i want to give you real training for you to have a really good and solid base and from there okay build so if you follow me from a i don't know one year ago and if you keep following me you're not meeting me now you will see that everything that i give you is always thought in building a player it doesn't matter if you are 15 year old or if you're a 40 year old you're gonna have a strong base so then keep growing and growing and getting better always improving step by step and not just making one rush and then messing up everything that you did before all right so i hope you guys really enjoy it have a great uh, end of the year uh, happy new year and i'll see you in 2020 thank you guys